um, see if I can make this this is, this is a tremendous opportunity to um, get one of the most significant aspects of this production process on film because uh, you never allow yourself to be seen, but who you are is seen in such expressive, extraordinary ways every day on that theater stage. So um, could you just talk a little bit about um, what this particular production process was like for you and um, what were the parts that were the most challenging and the things that you enjoyed the most? Well, um, my first thought was that because this show centers around vaudeville, is that that would give us an opportunity to use um, slightly uh, abstracted looking sets that had more of the feel of um, kind of the thrown together things that one does for vaudeville with uh, a kind of a harlequin approach to mixing and matching different elements that would just come on stage and be reused mm -hmm. um, much in the way uh, of actual vaudeville. Now we don't have the ability to drop a big old scrim down with a crudely painted uh, backdrop, but we are using the video projector as we so frequently do to give, get some of that feel. Uh, my other thought, uh, I remember seeing, there's a film called, um, and you're going to have to help me with that, Miss Somebody Presents, I always forget the name, do you remember how I... It's about a, uh, a uh, legitimate theater house during the war in London that is forced to turn to burlesque to keep the doors open. Oh, I remember. Henderson, Miss Henderson yes, presents. Ms. Henderson, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got some scenes in it that have this uh, extraordinary warm, uplit look that is characteristic of the era because of uh, footlights. Um, also because the technology of the theater at the time used different kinds of material uh, in the filaments of the bulbs, it has a different look. So um, we were able to harvest is the word I like to use. Uh, some of the strip lights from the little theater that are being used across, not being used anymore, they used to run across the back of the stage for general lighting. And, footlights, what we call the footlights. Yeah, so we put them down here, and so a lot of our scenes were able to, the audience may or may not notice a, a different look to the scene, but they, there's, a, there's light coming up from under people's chins that gives it a, a, a different feel and a kind of a warmer, older looking feel. And that was something I was particularly interested in getting. The challenge for a, a, a piece like this is that it's big and it has a lot of scenes and we have to depict at least roughly a lot of different spaces and we have limited wing space that we're sharing with a large cast. So um, we always have to come up with ways to have set elements that can be reused. In this case we have freestanding boxes basically that are double-sided that can spin around and be rearranged. And he um, so ingeniously put feet on them so they slide, so they slide. They're not silently well, in and out, entirely and silent. spin around. They're, they're a bit of they're thundery, but fortunately there's no generally problem. an orchestra blaring away <laughs> <laughs> during some of the key points. And that way that allows us, and we've got a table with um, gate legs on, a uh, uh, gated table that allows us to keep reconfiguring that with different tablecloths and things. And that's actually one of this kind of and it's and it's you know it's a fun opportunity for ingenuity. It's one of the central things that happens. Don't with all ever of the forget shows. that because it's all along the ways and saying, I can't believe you chose this play. And I, I will kill you. <laughs> let, me just, let me just say this: uh, Miss Ricard should be terminated for cause, uh, <laughs> owing to the insane decision to do the gargantuan gypsy. Um, next time we're going to do, as I've always recommended for every show, we're going to every do man. Waiting for Godot the musical. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a tree, a rock, and presumably 50 kids somehow written into the script. Um, so, so we're always having to come up with kind of ingenious ways for things to turn into other things, and uh, we but try to use the, the video projector. that's the beauty of theater. That's what's and, uh, so different about and I and, and particularly the, the, the fall plays are um, of a different order of, of experience, but the musicals are a challenge for me because they tend to want to be more sort of eye candy and some of the ingenious things one can do in smaller pieces don't really quite work so it's it's always something that we have to kind of work with and uh, and also musical theater lends more towards verisimilitude ver verisimilt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes um visual right where you, symmetry yeah and and and, and, and scenes that yeah. really feel like um we also don't have any, this particular theater doesn't have fly space, so we can't have things coming up and down, which would um, be handy in its way. But we do have a, a lovely big video projector that often can serve. By the way, how do you think about the slides? Pretty good. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Do you want to get rid of any of them? I don't know. We're, we fly, can talk about fly that. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's fight on the, the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the flag. I think, yeah, 
flies are here. Okay. Let's see what else. Wait um, a minute. What you, else? The flies fascinating. <laughs> what about the barn? You don't like any of it, do you? I'm, I've got. I'm not going to do the flies on my way. I'm just leaving them out. Okay. Anything else you want to know? I think that's perfect. You are very articulate. See. Um, Get it then. All I can say is I love the We're bursting at the seams, and we could always use any space that comes available. <laughs> Whoever happens to see this interview, I understand there's a mezzanine room off the gym. Sure would help. <laughs>